Hello, everyone. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. We'll be getting started in just about eight minutes. So feel free to get settled, grab a glass of water, say hello in the chat if you'd like. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Thank you for joining. We'll be getting started right on the hour. If you'd like to introduce yourself and say hello in the chat box, please make sure that you're sending your message to all panelists and attendees in the drop down.
Hello, everyone. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. We will be getting started in just about three minutes. Uh, in the meantime, you can say hello in the chat. Make sure that you are selecting all panelists and attendees so we can all see your messages. We'll give our colleagues just a couple more minutes to join. Okay. Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar, What's New in New Close-Up, presented by Catherine Stanett and Rachel Gibbon. We would like to thank everyone for joining us for this product-focused webinar all about, you guessed it, new close-up. Before we get started, I'd like to take a minute to go over some of the functionality of the webinar platform. First, at the bottom of your screen, you'll notice that there are several icons. The first button on the left is the chat. Be sure to send your messages to all panelists and attendees to ensure that the whole group can see your message. And as a reminder, please keep the chat focused on the content of the session. On the right, you will see a question and answer button, a Q&A button. Please use this to ask the presenter or the host any questions. We will do our best to answer questions as they come in, and there will be some dedicated time at the end of the session to go over questions as well. Finally, we will be sending along a certificate of attendance, a recording of the session, and a PDF of the slides within three business days of today's webinar. Okay? So without further ado, I'm pleased to introduce today's speakers. Catherine Stanett is an author with over 20 years of experience. She spent two years in Japan in the 1990s teaching English to a wide variety of students in many different settings. She is the co-author of several successful secondary series and has also written articles, songs, and raps for many popular EFL magazines. Most recently, she has written two levels of the National Geographic Learning Series Impact, one level of the primary series Look, and is co-author of New Close Up. She has given presentations and run workshops in many countries all around the world and also conducts webinars from her home office in the UK. Rachel Gibbon is global publisher for ELT at National Geographic Learning. 
She holds an MA in educational research with a focus on education and social justice from Lancaster University. Following several years teaching teenagers and adults in Italy, she's worked in educational publishing for 15 years in the UK and in Turkey, overseeing the publication of flagship titles. Her favorite part of every project is getting back into the classroom with teachers and learners to understand their challenges and aspirations so she can better support their achievements with learning materials that motivate and inspire. Welcome, Kath and Rachel. Thanks very much, Anders. And hello, everyone. It's, it's great to see so many of you joining us from so many different wonderful places around the world. Um, and thanks for making time for this today. We've had a team of authors, editors and designers working very hard over the last two years to prepare this great new edition of New Close Up. So we're very excited to share um, an overview of this with you today, as well as focusing in on some key areas. So for the first part of the session, I'm going to talk you through the changes that we made for the new edition. And then I'll hand over to our series author, Kath Stannett, who is going to explore the interconnection between academic attainment and student well-being, and how in this new edition we've provided support with this in New Close Up. She's also going to share with us how she drew on authentic National Geographic content to shape lessons that are guaranteed to engage teenage learners. We're going to try and leave some time for questions and answer session at the end. So please do stay with us for that and feel free to ask us about anything that you wish. Um, there's probably someone else wanting to find out exactly the same information as you. And before we get started, I want to ask you um, a question that will help us understand a little bit more about you in relation to close up. So I'm going to ask that we do a poll. Um, Great, the polls come up now. So we want to understand how well do you know Close Up? Is it a course book that you're currently using? Is it a course book that you used in the past and don't use anymore? Or have you never worked with Close Up but you joined us today because you'd like to hear more about it? So just click on the button that um, is most appropriate for you. I'll just give you a moment to do that. How are we doing, Anders, for, for responses? Great, okay. So quite a few of you, nearly 20% are currently using Close Up. That's great to see. Um, a few of you used it in the past. Hopefully what you see today will make you consider using Close Up again. And, but the majority of you haven't used close up before and you want to find out more so so that's great we can give you lots of information about the series today in this quick overview. So let's start so let's take a look why do we publish new editions. So close up was already a really successful series and it was being used in thousands of classrooms around the world. But we know in publishing that things don't stand still, the world keeps turning and we have to move with it. And in that, we try to follow you. So a new edition gives us the opportunity to update the content so that it feels fresh and relevant to the learners, to update our component offer, particularly the digital tools, as things move quite fast there. And above all, it's an opportunity to respond to feedback that we get from you and from your learners about what you want to see more of in our products and to what's happening in your world. So just to refresh our minds for those of you that already know Close Up and by way of introduction to those of you that don't, Close Up is a general English program for secondary learners. It can be used either as a general English course with strong exam support or directly as an exam preparation course. The resources Close Up offers are designed to help teenage learners of English to develop the key language and life skills that they need to be successful, both on their exam day and in the classroom, as in their future lives and careers. In this new edition, we've revised the A2 level, the B1 level, the B1 plus level and the B2 level. And we've added a brand new B2 plus level. So let's take a look at some of the changes that we've made. 
So just to show you how fresh the new edition is, let's preview some pages here. We've got the unit openers from a range of levels on this slide. More than 70% of the content in the new edition is entirely new. We've also had a brand new redesign and even more, and we've added even more National Geographic content. Because when we spoke to teachers using Close-Up, they told us that the National Geographic content really helped engage their students because the students know it's real content, that it's not made up and they can feel a connection to it that makes what they're feeling mean, feel more meaningful and relevant to them. So as I mentioned earlier, New Close Up can work either as a general English series with exam support or as an exam preparation series. And I'd like to get an idea as well of what kind of exams you're preparing your students for. So let's do another quick poll. Which exams do your secondary students currently take? So are they doing Cambridge exams like the key or KET as it sometimes know or preliminary or PET? Are they taking Trinity, Michigan? Are they just doing national or local exams we know in secondary? Um, often there's an exam at the end of secondary education or after each year or none of those. Have we got a fairly good quota of people responding? Great. Okay, so Cambridge exams, as expected, very popular, or about a third of you entering your students for Cambridge exams. Michigan also relevant. We've got 4% of people there. And as I expected too, you know, a lot of you entering your students for national or local exams, but, but quite a few non, and that I imagine is possibly partly due to the current situation with COVID and, and some schools being physically closed. We can talk more about that maybe in the question and answer session. So the good news for those of you preparing your students for Cambridge exams is that the new edition of Close Up is fully updated to reflect the 2020 changes to the Cambridge key and preliminary exams. As well as that, the tips that you find in new Close Up also integrate exam task types from Michigan and Trinity exams. We, we also find that increasingly a lot of local and national exams have similar formats to these international exams. So the exam tasks that you find here are likely to be very, very relevant to those too. And the most explicit form of exam preparation and practice that you can find in the book is the exam tips, which lead always to a corresponding exam task. Every one of these tips and tasks has a very clear purpose aligned to what students are asked to do in the exam. The exam tips give you guidance, give the students guidance on how to best approach the exams. They highlight the key skills needed for each part and general tips and advice. They include pointers like highlighting keywords, checking your answers, and other tips like che checking your spelling. Things that students might not have in the front of their mind when, when they're stressed about entering an exam, um, just to remind them. And in our research, teachers preparing students for exams talked about how important it is for students to know what to expect on the big day so they can feel confident and well prepared. And that's why the exam tasks in New Close Up are presented exactly the way that you see them in the exam. The exact same wording and the exact same format and presentation. Every reading, speaking, listening and writing lesson ends with an exam tip and an exam task. And there are also some exam tips and tasks on the vocabulary and grammar pages in the book. This all equates to about 60 exam tasks per level of the student's book. And that's 300 tasks across the five levels. And there's even more exam tips and tasks in the workbook and also in the online practice. And wherever you see an exam tip popping up in the student's book, the teacher's book has a corresponding exam tip box for teachers with detailed notes and explanation of what to say to really help the students get the most out of the exam tips and tasks feature. On the left here, you can see how the exam tips appear in the student book. And on the right, you can see the additional support for that task that you'll find in the teacher's guide. 
Now, we know from speaking to teachers of teenagers throughout this pandemic that formative assessments become more important than ever. Students aren't able in all contexts to sit exams in normal conditions. And we know that when students do return to school, it's going to be even more important for you to be able to monitor progress while they catch up with learning. In this respect, the online practice is a really fantastic tool. The activities in the online practice are designed to be completed when the students finished all of the lessons in the unit. And they revise all the language that they've covered in the student book and provide additional exam style tasks for them. The grade book in the online practice enables you as teachers to set up classes, assign activities, and it automatically marks and grades those activities so that you can monitor and track progress. This is a brand new feature of this edition. In terms of formative assessment, we've also got reviews in every unit in the student book and in the Live Well, Study Well lessons that um, Kath is going to talk to you about in a little while, we have a project um, as every one of those lessons and you can use that too as evidence of learning. It's a good way to show what students can do with the language, something that you might decide to showcase at a parents evening or in a learning portfolio. And we have further additional resources on the course companion site, which can help provide extra practice and consolidation when you feel that your students need it. Another brand new feature of this edition is the exam view test generator. And in the test generator, you can access ready made tests or make customised ones according to the areas of language that you'd like to focus on. You can use it after each unit to give a unit test, mid course to check progress or at the end of the year as a summative assessment. Now, one of the things that we get the most positive feedback about with close up is its clear structure and its rich variety of task types for each of the four skills. But there were also some areas that teachers mentioned to us that we felt we should address in skills development in close up. And the main one was listening. In the previous edition of Close Up, listening was taught discreetly in a separate lesson, like you can see from these two pages on the left hand side of the slide. And teachers told us what they'd like to see was more opportunities for students to develop the skill all the way through the content. So in lots of different lessons. So we've integrated listening skills development throughout the unit in this new edition, as well as still keeping the lesson that focuses entirely on listening, where we with specific listening skill focus. And the listening texts that you find there are really rich in genres and contexts, preparing them for what they might hear in an exam. And even more importantly, for a wide range of real life contexts when they use English in their futures. So here where you can see the headphones are next to examples of some of the additional listening activities that are integrated in other lessons like the vocabulary lesson and the grammar lesson. Another one of the areas that the team's invested a lot of energy in in the new edition is teacher support. And we've concentrated our efforts in three main areas that teachers using the last edition of the course told us were high on their list of priorities. One was to provide clear grammar explanations to support the teacher when he or she is explaining the grammar to the class. The other was managing mixed abilities, which I'm sure you can all identify with. And the other was the area that's a new emerging area really for us in language teaching, that's mediation. So let's take a look at those now. So. I just want to check with this slide, will it? No. Okay, so back when I was teaching teenagers in Italy, I often found myself having to answer challenging grammar questions, especially with higher level students, as they became more analytical about the language. And I'm sure some of the more experienced teachers among us today are particularly skilled at doing this. But I know that when I was a fairly inexperienced teacher, there were moments when I would have really appreciated some support with this. And what the grammar guide does in the teacher's book for new close up is it presents the grammar points in a simple and a clear way at point of use. So you can use the guide to explain the grammar rules and give students example sentences, all without the need to look for this information anywhere else.
And how many of your classes have a wide range of mixed abilities? Something teachers are always telling us that they would appreciate more help with is support with keeping all the class learning productively and on the same track together. So each unit, we have plenty of ideas to help both weaker and stronger students. The, on the left hand side, you can see an example here of an easier um, tip that gives a, you, these boxes here give useful tips within the teacher's guide on how to provide extra support and guidance for the students that need it. And these tips can also function as useful warm up ideas or to assess students existing knowledge before you start to introduce the topic. The extension boxes provide further exercise ideas that will challenge your more able students and help you make the most of the rich authentic content. While these fast finisher tasks help support you with ideas for short fun exercises that keep those students that race ahead of everybody else busy while they wait for their classmates to catch up. And now to mediation. So I'll be interested actually to hear, I can't see the chat box at the moment, but I'd be interested to hear about how, how much you're hearing people talk about mediation and how important mediation is becoming to you. It's something lots of teachers spoke to us about since the new learner scales for mediation were introduced into the CFR. Um, a lot of teachers were asking us for more activities in our materials to help them develop this important skill. And so in every new close up unit students book contains activities that develop students mediation skills. And these aren't marked on the student book page, they're highlighted in the teacher's book, where we have clear notes that explain what aspects of mediation is featured, as you can see in this example here, with the lesson, the reading lesson page. And then this is an extract from the teacher's book where it explains what type of mediation skill is being worked on here. This one's explaining and summarising the text for the benefit of another person. And you can see some other examples of mediation skills feature from the A2 level teachers book here on the right. There are at least two of these activities per unit. And the fact is mediation isn't something completely new, it's just a new way of grouping a set of skills that students need to become effective and empathetic communicators. And as teachers, once you start to become familiar with the types of activities that practice different mediation skills, you'll be able to apply some of these principles from the teacher's book to similar exercises. And last but not least, digital. So when we produce a new edition, it's also a great opportunity for us to give the course components a digital upgrade. And as we've learned this year, flexibility is more important than ever. Um, new Close Up is equipped with the latest and greatest digital support that we have to offer that you can tailor to any type of teaching context. So for those teachers that are teaching in an entirely print model, um, the student book and the print student book and print workbook can be used. Many people we find nowadays working in a kind of blended um, model with um print student book and online practice and then within the online practice we have um, the student's ebook which is a fully interactive ebook version of the student's book so if you were delivering your lessons completely on online you would be able to use that student ebook together with the, the online practice and as teachers you'll be able to present the lessons whether you're online or face to face with the classroom presentation tool. And remember that in the online practice, you also have your teacher version that has the grade book, which automatically marks activities and provides reports for you on students performance. As well as this, with the new edition, we've developed the online teaching toolkit, and that's a set of resources designed to support you delivering lessons online. It can be used as preparation and support to familiarise yourself with the course and also to help when you're planning lessons to teach them online with new close up. And so there are three main parts of this. There's an online teaching guide and that gives you a full series overview and orientation support for the digital components with lots of practical guidance and ideas for engaging efficient and interactive online lessons. 
And then you have the online teaching support sheets and they look at specific areas and stages in the process of teaching. Um, there's one for planning a lesson, one for tips and advice for teaching, delivering the lesson online. Another one that focuses on assigning content and a tracking progress. And the final one that looks at evaluating students when you're teaching them in an online context. As well as this is a series of detailed online lesson plans for each lesson type of a unit of new close up. So it should be everything there that to help you get set up and if you start to use the course and you're still teaching online. And as well as looking for ways to support you as teachers with this new edition, we've also looked at ways to promote student well-being in this time when students are less able to interact with their peers. And Kath, I'm going to hand over to Kath now and stop sharing whilst, so that she can talk to you more about that. There you go, Kath. Thank you so much, Rachel. That was brilliant. Um, thank you for explaining how the book works. Uh, it was really, really useful. It's like even useful for me, just to be reminded. <laughs> I'm going to catch up with everyone's chat and comments now while you present. Yeah, good. OK, so I'm going to share my screen now. Hopefully. Uh, I can make sure I click the right thing. Right. Can someone just um, confirm to me whether you can, is that working all right? And can you see the right Perfect. screen? Yep. Yep. Okay. Excellent. All right. So um, Rachel has talked to you about how the book works, the fantastic range of, um, range of support material that's available for teachers, all the exam tasks. Um, and I want to talk to you a little bit about how New Close Up also supports the students as well as the teachers. Um, because when we talk about supporting students, I don't just mean their academic performance and their passing their exams, I mean supporting the whole student. Um, and I think increasingly we're finding that uh, we're all starting to realise that a student's general well-being is inevitably linked to their academic performance. Um, so what we're talking about is learner well-being, and it's become a focal point in education, especially school aged children through secondary school. So you'll find learner well-being is explicitly referenced in some of the education policies of countries all over the world in frameworks for education developed by organisations like the OECD and in mission statements of private schools. Um, so what is well-being? Well, it, it's defined and assessed a little differently according to how you ask, but this is one diagram I'm showing you here, which is from PISA, the Programme for International Student Assessment, which is run by the OECD. Um, and that divides student well-being into four components, psychological, physical, cognitive and social. And in new close-up, we will try and address, or we have tried to address, all of these domains in one form or another. So we didn't specifically follow the PISA idea, but we have managed to cover all of those in our special strand, which I'm gonna come and tell you about in a sec. So whether or not they'll admit it, secondary students are not fully formed de de developmentally, and they really benefit from talking about values and behaviors and positive habits of the mind. So these, this learner wellbeing strand is critical for learners of this age. Um, students at secondary school, they're just beginning to discover who they are. They're beginning to grow in independence. Um, and it's really important for them to have this kind of support. Now, of course, at the moment, with the current state of the world, it's even more important. Um, everyone, I think, around the world has been concerned about everyone's well-being and particularly young people's well-being. Missing out on so much face-to-face -face learning um, has been tough. Um, and so anything that we can do to support them has got to be a positive. But the other fantastic thing is that it actually improves learning outcomes. And that makes sense, doesn't it? It makes sense that a happy student, a contented student, an emotionally stable student, a physically healthy student is going to be an academically more successful student. 
So it absolutely makes sense that we spend a bit of time supporting our, our whole student. And of course that supports exam success and with an exam book, that's what we're looking for as well. So in other words, when students live well, they study well. And that's why we, in this new close-up edition, we have developed a special new strand called Live Well, Study Well. So we have six Live Well, Study Well pages per level. We have them every other unit. And these are pages that focus specifically on um, those four domains that I mentioned earlier, which is social, cognitive, psychological, and physical well-being. Um, so they, they're not covering the exam syllabus necessarily, um, but of course they are also getting your students to practice English. So I, I'm just going to show you how a typical Live Well, Study Well page works so that you can see how we're, how we're trying to approach this. So we start off with some kind of input, which will be about the main topic of the unit. Um, so you can see here, um, on this one, which is the featured page here, we've got sort of six tips and that's all about using social media. But in other pages, it might be something like a little quiz. So here's a quiz for students to think about their learning style. Well, down here, you can see a nice infographic which explains how we work well in a team. Um, or here, there's a sort of a series of statistics about screen time and what the positives and the negatives are and this input text is an article. So there are different ways that we introduce the topic and um, get students to think about it and talk about it. And then you'll see here, having looked at the input text, we then ask the students to discuss what they've looked at and to personalize it. And that's always really important to get students to feel engaged and to get them to feel like they're being listened to. It's really important not just to speak, to speak about things sort of generically, but to ask them personally, how do you respond to this? So for example here, do you enjoy sharing personal information and photos on social media? Um, so once they've had a personal response, we then move on to this. And we have one of these on every Live Well, Study Well page, and this is called Mind Your Mind. So Mind Your Mind is really a series of strategies, tips and suggestions for students that will help them to improve their social and emotional well-being. So it will be linked into the topic. So for this Live Well, Study Well, which is social media, we then have a Mind Your Mind, which has got some great strategies for students to keep positive. Um, so thinking about why they use social media, how it makes them feel, making sure they take a break. Don't look at social media as soon as you wake up in the morning, guilty or last thing at night, and this will help you start and end the day calmly. And don't take things you see on social media too seriously. So some really, really good practical strategies that students can actually use. And then they go on to do some project work. Um, so what we've done on these pages is we always have two projects. And the idea is that one of the projects will tend to be group work and the other project is usually for students to work individually on. So as a teacher, you can make the choice. You can decide, OK, I think it's more appropriate for my students to work in groups or you can give the choice to your students and say, well, which would you prefer to do? Do you want to work individually or do you want to work in groups? But the point is that having learned about this topic and having discussed it and having looked at the strategies, they then work on some projects um, to to consolidate what they've already learned. And of course, because this is a book to teach English, after all, we have the useful language. Um, and that useful language is of course, very, very useful for the Live Well, Study Well page, but it's also very useful for speaking um, and for elements of the speaking exam where often students, particularly in the slightly more difficult exam, students are going to be asked to discuss things like social media or um, healthy living. So. Uh, just more useful language input there is, is very handy. So that's what our Live Well, Study Well page is. And as I say, we have six of these per level um, and they cover all sorts of topics. I've just written a few of them here, but obviously six times five is 30. So we have 30 topics covered throughout the whole five levels. Um, and some of them are 
things like making friends, managing screen time, eating well, getting fit, problem solving, being a team player, time management, positive thinking, cultural communication, managing money, using social media, dealing with difficult situations. So all really, really useful things for students to talk about, to consider and to learn strategies so that they can cope with those kind of things better in the future. And covering those four domains, which if you remember on the, the PISA diagram, psychological, physical, social and cognitive. Now, another thing that we offer in the Live Well, Study Well strand got my okay let's see if that works yeah another thing we offer are little extra videos so i have made three videos for each level of new close-up and it's just me at home in my office or um one of them's been shot in my kitchen talking directly to students about some of the things that are mentioned in the live well study well pages and the idea is that it gives the students a real personal connection to the subject, um, to the book. Um, and also, of course, it's very good practice for their English. They're very short videos. They're just three or four minutes long. They have subtitles at the bottom. So even if it may seem a bit fast or they may have a bit of trouble understanding, they can read the subtitles and that will really help them. And it's just a little bit of extra support for them. Um, so there are three of those for every level. Um, I think it's a way to help students feel connected to the book, as I said, and also engaged. And in fact, student engagement is the next thing that I want to talk about. So we've talked about living well and study well, studying well. Um, but let's talk about student engagement as well. Um, it's something that I feel very passionately about it's so important because a motivated and an engaged student is a student who will perform better in the classroom. Um, and one of the things that we find, um, or I've found working for National Geographic Learning is that being able to use the fantastic National Geographic materials is so fascinating and motivating for students and really engages them. And you know, you see a lot of course books which are really excellent and have excellent materials and are very well researched, but they don't relate to the real world. And I, I do feel strongly that when students are teenagers, when they're growing up and they're in secondary school, they need to be learning about things that are relevant and that are related to the real world. They need to be understanding about different cultures, different societies, the way that people work all around the world, the way that people live all the way around the world. Um, and as a writer, it's sometimes challenging to tie all that into an exam syllabus, um, but it can be done. So let me give you some examples of how we've tried to do that in new close up. So with the reading texts, we cover all the topics that you would expect to be covered in, uh, in an exam book, in fact, in any general English course book. So for example, one of the topics is sport. And um, in this page, and I actually can't remember now if it's from A2 or B1, but in this page, uh, which is about sport, we talk about something called the Good Gym. So the Good Gym is um, an organization that's uh, sprung up in the UK. Um, and it's basically encourages people not just to go out and keep fit, but to do something positive for their community at the same time. So for example, you might join the good gym and then your task will be to run five kilometers to um, an elderly person's house, someone who's feeling lonely, go in, meet them, have a cup of tea, have a chat, take them their newspaper and then run back home again. Or you might have groups of people in the good gym who go and run to a local river and help clear it, help clear all the litter away, and then they run back to where they started from. So it's a combination of the two, which is really nice. And then to cover a topic like housing, we've got this um, article, Living Underground, which talks about underground houses around the world. So you've got underground houses that are more than a thousand years old in Guadix in Spain. Um, you've got underground houses in Matmata in Tunisia, the ones that featured in Star Wars, and underground houses in Kuba Pedi, which uh, were built under the 
um, next to the opal mines because of the fearsomely hot temperatures, it was actually much cooler to live underground. So it's, you know, it's covering housing, we're covering all that important vocabulary, but we're also just telling students more about the real world, which is so much more motivating. And here you can see another article, this is about technology um, and how technology changes lives. And um, you can see a fantastic photograph here. It's one of my favorites, I think, from this level, um, which shows the Samburu people of Northern Kenya. Um, and they're coming into the primary school and learning how to use tablets. Uh, and then the article explains how the, the use of technology is really changing their lives and really useful within their community. A few more examples, again, from reading texts. So if you're gonna have a unit about jobs, why not find out about a really interesting, unusual job? Um, this is a real job. Did you know that in La Paz, I don't know if we have anyone here from Bolivia today, but in La Paz, uh, you have people who dress as zebras and help other people cross the road safely and um, teach people about road safety. And apparently they do a lot of crazy dancing and singing as well. Um, and they, they have you know proper training for this. So it's, a, it's an important job. Um, in this unit, which is about education, um, you can find out all about the recycled orchestra um, in Paraguay, which uh, uses instruments that have been uh, repurposed from materials found on landfill fill sites. So you've got clarinets made from water pipes and cellos made from oil cans. Um, and this article, again, a, a favorite photo of mine. I just love the bright colors. Um, this is all about the sappers and sapperses I'm not sure about my pronunciation there. Um, they're from the Democratic Republic of Congo from Kinshasa. Um, so Sapper means the society of elegant people. So these incredible people um, who live in um, the Democratic Republic of Congo and they dress in the most exquisite, elegant and quite eccentric way. And they have this special pose that they do, this special dance where they throw open the their jacket so that you can see the label and the beautiful silk lining. So it's just a really, really interesting take on fashion, um, which also, as I say, motivates students, tells them more about the real world. And even outside of reading texts, you know, even when we're talking about vocabulary or, by, or about grammar, we really want to, again, we, we've tried so hard to include real stories about real people. Um, so it's not all just fictional people, made up stories, it's a way of, teaching your students about life. So in this grammar page, which is um, practicing perfect modals, you can also find out about this uh, computer hacker called Jack Cable, who has become an ethical hacker. So he advises companies about how to protect themselves um, from non-ethical hackers. And on this vocabulary page here, students can also learn um, about a, a very unusual winter festival from Slovenia uh, while practicing words for festivals and traditions. And of course, you know, a National Geographic course would not be a National Geographic learning course without amazing videos. And we have those two. So we have six videos per level. Um, and of course, they're fantastic, interesting, um, and wide ranging and diverse videos. So I've just picked two that I really enjoyed writing the activities for. This one's about orangutans and how they build their nests in trees. Um, so there's some obligatory cute footage of baby orangutans, which is always important. Um, and this one sort of completely the other, the other side, this is about AI and robots. And in this, for this video, uh, students look at different types of robots and then they have to match them with their descriptions. Um, so just two really fun videos. Um, and as I say, there are six per level. So we have six Live Well, Study Well pages and six video pages per level. So I think that's everything that I wanted to tell you about. Just to summarize, um, as well as everything that Rachel has already explained to you, um, new close up helps to support students with activities that promote psychological, physical, social and cognitive well being, and it engages students with interesting thought provoking, relevant um, real world material. So now I'm going to hand back, I hope you enjoyed that and please ask any questions and we will try to answer them.
Okay, thank you so much, Catherine. Thank you so much, Rachel. Um, a couple of questions have been coming in and I will actually answer the first one if that's all right, because I accidentally clicked the answer live button. Um, uh, there, there was a question about whether there will be packages that include the student's book, the online practice, the ebook and the printed workbook. And the answer is absolutely. Um, the best place to go for information on packages, uh, availability, timelines, all of that is your local National Geographic Learning representative. If you are not in touch with them already, you can visit eltngl.com slash repfinder to find out who you should be speaking to about that type of information. Okay. Excellent. And Amir just um, put a question that's a real brain teaser for us. Um, is Egypt featured in the book? And I know that it is, but I couldn't think of a specific lesson. I've got some I'm, musical I'm copies to think as well. up here and I was having a look. But yeah, how could I'm we... racking my brains. I'm sure that it is. Yeah. <laughs> we try to represent as much of the world as we possibly can in our books. So um, I think you'll be able to find examples um, texts that talk about places everywhere around the world and, and children, well, students age, children represented in the books too from, from everywhere. Yeah, we really do. I mean, honestly, when you're sort of thinking about a course over five levels, you end up with great big Excel spreadsheets showing different countries and where they're mentioned in the book to make sure that we have a good spread. We, we try really, really hard to represent everyone. And thank you as well for some of the really lovely feedback that, that's been feeding through. Kath probably couldn't see all of it while she was presenting. Um, the enthusiasm for Close Up as a course and, and lots of positive feedback on some of the new features of this new edition. After so much hard work when you when you produce a new course, it's, it's really, really motivating to yeah. hear that. So thank you. Um, yeah. I do hope that some of you will choose to use new Close Up and, and that you'll have lots of positive experiences with your students with, with the book. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, Simona is asking, when will the course be available? Um, so new close up is, is beginning to be available right now, correct? It's publishing now. So some yeah. things are, some things are printing and some, some things... levels, as you can see, except it's kind of green screening me out. Mm -hmm. um, actually, yeah, already in our warehouse. Um, and, and the others are on the way. The first four levels are all available fully this year, ready for starting to teach from September. Mm -hmm. um, the B2 plus level will publish a little bit after that and be ready for the following academic year. Mm -hmm. And you should definitely reach out to your local National Geographic Learning representative if you have questions about um, import times and when, when the program will be reaching your individual country. Um, yeah. speak, speak to your local representative. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Those of you in Southern Hemisphere countries like Brazil, you know, they'll be looking at kind of January um, onwards. Uh, Liliana is asking about how you would recommend choosing the level for lower secondary school classes, grades six to nine. How would you how would you decide which is the le which level which is level appropriate? To use. I think as a teacher, I know that what I would have done is is I would look you know you assuming that you're using a course book at the moment, you probably get a good sense of you know how. What, how long the reading texts are, what the difficulty of the activities are. So, so I'd probably have a look at some sample content from the levels that are available and to some extent make my own judgment. There's, there's lots of um, online kind of tests that are available to assess students level as well that you might want to use with the class to see whether that gives you some feedback on their, on their estimated CFR level. And, and we're, yeah. we're actually producing one of those now, right Rachel, now, yes, which is true. Yeah. Oh, we yeah. Do know. oh that's great. I didn't know that. That's the really National good. Geographic Learning Online Placement Test will be uh, available in the very near future. And that is one way that you could uh, identify the appropriate level for your students. We'll mm -hmm. also have correlations on the companion site, a uh, CEFR correlations, and that can be a useful tool as well. Yeah. And I would generally aim for the middle of the class to some extent, you know, so that you give in sufficient challenge to, 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 you know, you always have mixed stability situations in secondary. So you want just the right amount of challenge really. And, and I think there's lots of opportunities within the series for extension and consolidation for, you know, students that need a bit more help to catch up and those that are ready to go a bit further. 
So there's a question in the Q&A box about the certificate. We will be sending along the certificates within three business days of the webinar. So that is coming, uh, coming your way. Yep. And a question in the chat about um, why doesn't the book have social problems topics such as bullying or um, teens to teen section and engaging teen students from all over the world, um, things like that. Well, actually, the Live Well, Study Well section deals really well with some of those topics. Yeah, it really does. And it specifically does things like, you know, dealing with difficult situations, um, dealing with anxiety, resilience, all those kind of things. So I can't think of one where they're specifically bullying, but there are very, there are lots of things around teens issues. Mm -hmm. And as I said, the whole the mind, mind your mind section is really designed to give teens lots of strategies to deal with those kinds of problems. I think what we've tried to do in the Live Well Study Well lessons is ensure that the way that we have organised the content, it, it gives you the choice as a teacher to kind of decide how in depth you want to go with that particular topic. We, mm. you know, it's a sensitive age group, this age group. Mm. So we don't want to force students into talking about things that they might not feel comfortable about. So we leave the task open-ended enough, really. The content is open-ended enough for you to decide because you're the best judge of your own students yeah. to decide whether you want to go deeper into that and explore some kind of more thorny, prickly kind of issues like yeah. bullying. But there's yeah. definitely the scope for doing that with what's yeah. in the lesson. And, and as I pointed out, you know, the fact that we have two projects for each of those, again, gives the teacher some choice because usually one of those projects is more for individuals and one, one more for groups. So again, that gives you the choice to decide what you think is most appropriate for your class. Yeah. Excellent. Well, I have just a couple of other pieces of information before we wrap up uh, for today. First off, thank you very much, Kath and Rachel for the fantastic session. And thank you to everyone who's joined and still with us. A um, couple of, Points of order. First off, immediately after the end of this session, you will be directed to a feedback survey to let us know what you thought of today's session. Um, that information is absolutely invaluable. So we very much appreciate your feedback. Um, if you are interested in learning more about using new close up in your classroom, you can learn more at the product website, which is eltngl.com slash new close up, or you can contact your local National Geographic Learning representative at eltngl.com slash repfinder. We will be sending a recording of this session as well as a certificate and the slides within five business days. So be on the lookout for that to come through. And also as a, as a reminder, as always, be sure to join our online community for teachers of English on our social media channels, on Facebook, on LinkedIn. Um, we are using those channels to um, communicate up-to-date information about events, practical classroom tips, showcasing some of our exciting real world content, new product information, and we would love to, we would love to see you there. Okay. So thank you. Thank you again, everyone. Thank you so much um, for, for taking time in your busy days or evenings or mornings to join yeah. us. Um, yeah. Thank you very great. much. Okay. Have a great day. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye.